Hello and welcome to this demonstration of our cloud-based private hire and scheduling software PH Cloud. During this short introduction we will cover the different areas within PH Cloud as well as their features and functionality. So let's begin. Initially when you log in you will hit this user configurable dashboard. From here we can edit the different widgets and KPIs that are shown and we can edit their position to make it configurable per person. Down the left hand side of the system we will find the main menu and our next section is customers. From within customers we can search for a new customer either via the main company name or a contact at that customer. Within the below list we see all the different customers that we have and can click on them and see an overview. We can see their current account balance along with their credit limit. We can see any addresses stored so we can store multiple addresses for each customer as well as multiple contacts. So we can have different teachers for instance that book from a certain school as well as accounts and finance contacts. Below here we show all the invoices this customer has, any credit notes, bookings, quotes and change history. Next up we have quotes. So the initial overview screen for quotes shows us all the different quotations in the system, the quote reference, the person or company that it's for, some quick contact information, value, and whether that quote has been converted into a booking or not. At the top, we can search via quote reference. We can also search the description field within a quote. So for instance, this is normally used to denote the destination or some sort of, some sort of description uh, of the quotation or booking. So this can be searched to help easily find other quotes or bookings in the past that match the same criteria. We can view and filter these down by different periods, as well as whether the quote has been not yet priced, priced but not sent, sent, lost or booked. To launch into a new quote, we go to the add new quote section at the top right hand side of the screen, and this will take us into the new quote area. Now we begin by entering the customer. Now this can be done by simply typing the name of the contact or the customer itself. We can click the search icon and look through our main customer search and filter down here. We can add a brand new account customer which will create a new customer for us. And finally, we can add a non-account customer that will simply record some basic information on the customer themselves. For this example, I'm gonna search for one of our existing ones and select that customer. Over to the right-hand side, we can enter some basic job information, such as the total passengers for the booking or the quote, the vehicle type that we'd like to select. Now, this is completely customizable by you. So in the settings area of the system, these three vehicles will be set up as standard. However, you can change them or you can add your own different types on. Now, each vehicle holds a number of different facilities. So if I click on this one, we display the different type of facilities that that vehicle offers as a helpful reminder for staff. And behind that vehicle type, we also have all the auto costing figures. So different pricing can be allocated to a different vehicle type. And as we enter the job information, that can then be displayed to you in a different tab at the top called costs, which I'll show you shortly. Next, we select the different types of luggage requirements. Again, these are fully customizable by yourself. And finally, we pop in a description field. So we can have anything that the customer will use to describe the trip. It helps for you searching for quotes or bookings in the future. And this is also forwarded onto the invoice line item uh, for the customer so that they can reference back to the job. Underneath the customer themselves, we also have the ability to add in a customer purchase order reference um, or quote reference should they wish to use one. Once we've entered these basic details, we can now start building the job. So you will initially see the start and finish points have populated with your default depot that's set up in settings. On the right hand side, we show this in the map view. And you can click the drop down to select between different depots if you have multiple. 
Alternatively, if you know the vehicle's actually going to be starting from a different start point, for instance, it's coming off a job that's just down the road, we can select the location icon and we can now search for a location for where that job is going to begin. So we've got multiple options for how it's going to calculate the start and end point of the job, which is essentially where the driver starts and where the driver finishes. For this example, we will use the default depot. Next, we're going to begin entering the locations for the pickups. So for instance, we will use our office location for the start pickup. And immediately you will see that the search jumps to this information on the, the map jumps to the information on the right hand side. Now, if we go and enter the, the next location along, So we'll go to Stadium Drive in Manchester, for instance. Again, on the right hand side, you'll notice that it's building this up instantly as we enter these points in. The red lines are the travel to and from your depot or start location and finish location. So the dead mileage on the job and the blue lines are the actual job, in, um, job travel itself. Now, when you actually added the customer onto the job, you'll have noticed these favorite icons appear in next into the list. What we can do is we can click on these and it will show us a full list of all the previous locations that this customer has traveled to or from, ordered by the number of times that they have been there. So their most used pickup or destination points will always be at the top. You can simply click on these to select and it will add that into the job for us. So for instance, if after Manchester we need to go to another location, we can go to the new action button in the bottom left, and we're gonna add on a pickup point. So this adds a, another point on for us. And now we'll go to the favorite icon, and we'll go up here and we can have a look at the different locations that are available to us, and we'll select Worcester from the list. And that immediately adds that into the list for us. And again, you can see that this is built up in the map window on the right hand side. Now, for any of these points, we can also edit the information that is stored by clicking the edit symbol. Now for every point location, we have a unique name. So this can be set to something that the, the customer recognizes. So for instance, it's station house for us. And the first line of the address is also Station House on East Lane. So we can update any of this information as we need to. Additionally, the map on the right hand side shows the exact point for this, uh, for this pickup. Now what we have the option to do here is we can expand this map. So we can take a look at more in depth. We can choose the layers icon down in the bottom right hand side to select a satellite view. So that gives us the ability to actually check out the location itself um, and make decisions on where we can actually pick up based upon the vehicle size. And finally, we have the ability to actually drag and drop the exact pickup point itself and set it to exactly where the customer would like to be collected. Now, we have our driver's application being released um, in around a month and a half's time. Now that driver's application will give the driver access to all his work ticket documents, show him his upcoming work, as well as a walk around app. But the most important thing there is when he looks at an individual job, he will see all the points listed and he will be able to click on a relevant point and he will see this exact mapping data that you're seeing here on his mobile device. So what that will allow him to see is exactly where the customer wishes to be collected from. So once you've made that selection, drag and dropped it to exactly where the customer wants to be collected. We select update in the top right hand corner and that saves that new location to the job. So if I click apply, that's now been updated and that's all been saved in there for us. Next, we pop the times in. So this can be done in two ways. We can do it completely manually or we can use PH Cloud's built in auto time tool. So if we select the calendar for the pickup and we're going to say it's today's date you'll see as soon as we pop a date or time in it spins out into two rows because essentially every point has an arrival and a departure time 
So this is the first pickup. So we have a position time that the driver should arrive for and then the actual pickup departure time. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to select 9 o'clock or 9 a.m. For, uh, for the departure time and we're now going to click the auto time symbol and what that will do is it will work backwards and forwards through all the pickups in the job to put the minimum travel time which is based upon PSV so we use a commercial here maps license um, to work out all travel times which takes into account historic traffic data as well as roads and speeds that are suitable to a PSV vehicle. So it's not like using Google Maps where it's going to be inaccurate. Um, this is as accurate as we can get without using live traffic data. So if we click the auto time button, you'll see that that rips through. It tells us the minimum time the vehicle needs to leave from our depot. All the other times are then entered. And this now gives you the opportunity to make any changes or adjustments that you need. So for instance, now we can set the position time to 8.30, so we want the driver there half an hour earlier. We want him in the depot for six o'clock. And we can alter any of this information as we need. Once we're happy that the information is built up, we might need things such as a second day on the job. Let's say this is a tour operator's job um, and we need several days on for the itinerary. So if we go back to the new action button, we have the option to add a additional pick up and drop off or an additional leg as it can be referred to. And this essentially begins from that last point and allows us to add a second days or third days worth of information on. And it splits these up into separate legs so the drivers will get separate work tickets for each part of the journey. Alternatively, we can add an additional vehicle on. Now that will simply add another job onto the, uh, the quotation or booking. Um, so this can be another 49 seater, another executive, tail lift, etc. Allows you to put a second job's worth of information in. And if we expand the additional job info section, it allows us then to change those individual details. So for instance, at the top, we selected that this was for 50 passengers and an executive vehicle. This second vehicle may only be for 20 people and it may only need to be a standard tail lift or minibus for instance. So we can alter all these requirements per job. And if I just remove that off there, the other option we have is to add a return. Now if I select add return, it's gonna add a second leg on with all the pickups in reverse order. And it's now gonna allow me to pop those times in and say to the system what time I actually want it to go back on. So we're not actually going to depart until six o'clock and I can rip those auto times down and it just gives me a return job. Now in the diary this return would show as a single um, solid block because essentially it is saying to the system that this vehicle is staying with the customer because they're two connected legs. If that wasn't the case, if this was something like an airport run where the vehicle was going out at this time, it was coming back to depot or it was available to book in between, all we would do is go back to the action button for the first part of the job and we return it to base. What happens then you'll see is it splits into two completely separate jobs. Now in the calendar or in the diary, these will show us two completely separate items that can be scheduled to different drivers and different vehicles if required and clearly shows as available for other work in between. So once we've added all the job information on, as I mentioned, it will now the system will now look at the total distance, time, hour requirements. And if we go to the cost section at the top, it breaks this down for us. So all these items you see here on the left hand side are customizable per user. So you can actually set up these different cost items for the different vehicles. And then it will show us a breakdown of these costs that you've configured and what the total cost is. You can then apply an automatic markup and you can use these prices if you want directly onto the booking. Or you can simply use them as a guideline and manually enter the job prices yourself. Now, as well as the basic job pricing, we also have the ability to add on extras. So if I select add a job extra, we can add on additional details such as parking. And we can have different nominal codes that these costs are assigned to. 
and we can have different VAT rates. And once added, these all get added onto the extras line information and will obviously be printed on the customer's confirmation as well. Finally, we have the ability to add job notes on. So what this will do is it will add a notation that's either available to view for the customer and the driver, such as the general category, or it's available only to the driver on his work ticket. Once we're happy with all the details that have been entered, we can now click save and this will create the quotation for the customer. So they've now been issued a quote reference and that can obviously be searched for in the quotation section of the system. We can now print out a quote confirmation or we can email a confirmation to the customer. Additionally, once that customer comes back to us and they are happy to go ahead with the booking, we can convert this to a booking. Finally, we can do things like clone the quote. So if a customer comes back and they want something very similar to what they had last year, we can simply go and find that quote for them and we can clone it off. It will ask us exactly what we'd like to copy, the date we'd like to clone it for, and then clicking clone will create an identical job for us on that different date. For this instance, we are going to convert to booking. It will give us the option to add an additional customer purchase order reference, should they want one different to the original quote. Specify the deposit that is required. And now that creates an immediate booking for us. At the top, we can see based upon the balance due date defaults that are set in the background of the system, uh, that this quote is now overdue. That will be due to the travel date being set to today. However, if that balance due date was set ahead of today, then this would appear in amber. So you can clearly see that there is a balance outstanding, but it's not yet due. Finally, if we actually make a full payment on this job, you'll see that it now shows in green and the full balance has been taken. Now that it's a booking, we can re-invoice the job we can send out or print or email a booking confirmation. As I say, alternatively, we can produce an invoice. So the invoice can be a pro forma or a full invoice itself. And if we create the invoice, all those details pop through to the line items with the different VAT breakdowns. And again, this invoice can now be printed or emailed to the customer. We can receive money against it. And as soon as we post that invoice for accounting purposes, this now locks down that original booking, so no further changes can be made at this stage. If we go into the booking section, that booking we've just made, there we can see at the top, we can clearly see whether it has been invoiced or not. And if we go into the booking, it shows us that no further changes are permitted as the final invoice has been issued. Obviously changes can be made if we were to credit off the invoice. And at the top, we can see a link that jumps us straight to that invoice itself. Now, if a customer didn't want a quote and just wanted to go directly ahead with making a booking, we can just go straight to add new booking and the same process as quotes is followed. However, this will now create an immediate booking for us. PH Cloud also has a contract section. So different contracts can be created and each contract has different runs. We call them items. Um, you can think of them as a, a morning or an afternoon run or however you wish to break down the different elements of the contract. So if we click into an item here, you'll see that it has a start and end date that it is going to spin things out for. We have an occurrence pattern, whether that's daily, weekly, on certain days and however many weeks. And we can also tag an exclusion pattern. Now these are set up in the settings area of the system and obviously allow you to exclude things like school holiday dates uh, where you don't wish the contract to be taking place. The job information is set up the same as what we covered in quotes or bookings to pop the pickup info in. And then once you're happy, that is saved onto the contract and that will be spun out in the diary. At any time from the individual contract area, we can go to invoice a contract and it will look at all the previous runs that have not yet been invoiced on certain dates and we can either tag all of them or we can select the individual ones that we wish to invoice 
and produce an invoice for those dates. Next up we have the diary section. So when we go into the diary section, initially we have an overview of all the dates in the system on the date that we have selected. So this is a demo data, so I do apologize, it's, a, uh, it's about two months back. However, for the 24th of June, we can see all of these dates that are in here. We can see the type of booking that it's for. So we can see a contract and we can see these are all private bookings. We can filter by those types or by events. Now events I'll come to shortly, but within each vehicle and driver, they have their own built-in calendar. This is for recording things like holidays, um, and your leave sickness for vehicles. It could be MOTs and checks. So they all go into their individual vehicle diary and then they appear on the main diary. So obviously you can see when they are blocked out for use. Next up, we have the customer's details. We have the item name if it's a contract, pickup and destinations, total number of passengers for this job, the vehicle type required, and we see very quickly whether there is a driver or vehicle assigned. Now I can click onto any of these jobs and I will get a very quick overview in the right hand side of what the vehicle is actually doing. I can do a manual selection of the driver or vehicle and I can see some quick customer information below. This is a contract so at the top I can view the contract and go and have a look at the individual contract date. I can exclude and cancel this individual date so if there is a cancellation on a contract for a certain day. Uh, if I clicked into view contract, I could also edit this individual day's work. So if one of your school runs tomorrow needs to be picked up an hour later, we can go in and we can change it just for that individual date. So that's the overview page. Then we have the visual diaries. So if we click into vehicle, we can now see exactly which jobs have been allocated, where our availability is, and in the bottom section, the jobs yet to allocate. Now on the job itself, we see a solid bar, which is the actual job, um, the actual job times themselves. So the, the pickup for this customer is 9 a.m. through to 2 p.m. If we highlight over the job, we can actually see some basic information. So the uh, the start location, where it's going to, and the number of passengers. And these red bars at the front and end are the dead mileage travel for the vehicle. So when it leaves your depot and it's actually traveling to the customer. So it's very clear for you to be able to see exactly what's going on and what the vehicle should be doing at this moment in time. All the jobs that haven't been allocated below are all drag and drop. So we can simply grab one, move it up to the calendar. You'll see exactly where that time bar is and we can release it to allocate at the general time. Now any of those jobs themselves um, can be unallocated from the right hand summary panel and you will get scheduling warnings if you try to schedule something where another vehicle is moving it gives you the option to overwrite that should you know that it's still possible uh, but it will warn you about that to make sure that you don't have any accidental crossovers now again this shows in that one day format if we move it to a week month or year view what you'll see is initially it switches to a summary view now the summary view simply shows us how many vehicles or movements we have on that individual day. So it gives you a rough idea of how many jobs you've got out. You can click on the day to jump straight to the view. Alternatively, if we go back to that week view, we can switch to detailed view, in which case we actually see the jobs and where they span across days. So we can clearly see where a job spans across two, three, four days, for instance. So we have this view for vehicles, we have the identical view for drivers, and again the same drag and drop functionality. And then finally we have a generic jobs view that simply shows all the jobs for this date that we've got selected and where they all fall during the day. So it gives you an idea of how many vehicles or how, how many jobs are out in a specific period of that day. So that's the diary section. Next up we have the reporting area. So reports themselves cover a, a wide range of, of items such as financial, age data reports, customer payments, bookings yet to be invoiced. We have a number of booking statement reports, scheduling reports, so things like work tickets and diary views for them to be put up in the, uh, the office, contract analysis and so on and so forth. 
they can all be found in the report section so running an item such as work ticket you then have a parameter icon appear at the top right hand corner that can be selected to change the parameters of the report select certain drivers and certain date ranges then we have things like backups so one question we get asked a lot because it's a private hire system is what happens if our internet connection goes down I mean the good news is because PH cloud is mobile it means you can access it on a mobile phone a tablet you can go next door and get the Wi-Fi in, uh, in, in Costa coffee or wherever else you need to if you really want to be certain there are also a number of offline backups that can be taken from PH cloud so for instance we allow you to download all of your customers and all of your jobs and job information in an offline CSV file so simply clicking these items will download a master CSV that has every bit of information required for every job you've had historically and in the future so that will cover items like all the individual pickups the times the start and finish times uh, customer notes requirements how much has been paid so on and so forth that's our reports and backup section next up we have our invoices section so this will show all the invoices you've had on the system as well as credit notes allow you to view edit post credit off anything else that you need to do for any invoicing that's on the system below that we have the financials section so within the financials we have tools like our sales daybook ledger that allows you to clear off your your different invoices and credit notes as and when they are checked down we have a receipt section that allows you to pay money into the system these all work very similar to how sage works so we select a customer it would show any payments on account and invoices and allow you to receive payments against multiple or individual ones of those we have an individual cash day book again for reconciling individual cash day book payments and viewing previous cash day book batches we have a full nominal activity ledger, ledger and a full trial balance next up we have the resources section so this shows something like all our vehicles and we can go into each individual vehicle alter their name information licensing details and as I mentioned previously above any vehicle or driver you'll see a schedule tab and this will show you all the different dates and things that are available so for instance on this vehicle if we go to today's date we can block this out for an MOT we can assign a driver if there's one that's required and add some notes and descriptions into there if needed now that block out if we then went back to our vehicle diary and change this to today's date you will see that vehicle is immediately blocked out in our diary as well as vehicles we also have drivers and again we have the usual information stored against the driver as well as their own individual schedule tab to record things like sickness and annual leave lastly we have the settings section so this is obviously where you can set up different items such as all your your booking customer vehicle and driver categories different facilities that are available company profile stores all your payment terms address information logo everything that appears on all your documentation you can manage your users and the different roles that they have assigned which defines where they have access to in the system then we have setups to do with nominal code payment types set up your depots and everything else that is required to set the system up and get up and running for you so that is an overview of PH sure you have a few more questions um, and I'll be pleased to answer those either on email or via a phone call thank you very much have a good day